what we've been promoting is essentially sustainable intensification of small-scale farming systems. And what that really means is farmers taking on board more conservative approaches to inputs and more conservative approaches to the way they manage that resource. For example, they could be adopting conservation agricultural uh, strategies and technologies. They could be using lower amounts of fertilizer that reduce essentially contamination of groundwater or losses uh, in, in low efficiency and also being conservative in the way they use their water resources. So the key element is adopting more sustainable uh, intensification uh, uh, processes in your farming system. If we take, for example, the adoption of small-scale conservation agriculture, and by that meaning uh, using direct drilling or uh, direct sowing of seed without any disturbance of the soil and keeping a ground cover, it has huge implications with respect to protecting the soil from wind erosion and water erosion. So just that simple practice of adopting uh, zero tillage options can have very significant implications in reducing uh, land and water degradation. And there are technologies out there that are built for both large farming systems, as we see in Australia, through to very small farming systems, as we see in Bangladesh, with two-wheel uh, tractors that have direct seeding uh, capabilities. It's been phenomenal. It's, it's almost a, a game-changing process, particularly where labour is becoming one of the challenges that they have. And I think that's what we've got to be looking at, is there these opportunities as we get demographic change and labour becomes a lot more scarcer and there are opportunities now to look at how do we introduce these technologies that are labour saving and also resulting in significant conservation measures. I think the way to sell conservation may not be through the traditional approaches that we've taken, where we've looked at essentially the effects of, of poor management, but rather looking at it a different angle, where essentially what are the benefits to the end user. There is disappointment, I think, from the degree of scaling out. But there are very significant bright spots. And in sub-Saharan Africa, there are millions of farmers that are adopting more conservative approaches to their agricultural production systems and also getting significant benefits over substantive areas of land. However, if we want to scale this up, we probably need a paradigm shift in the way we effectively get farmers to adopt more conservative approaches. And maybe there are opportunities of looking at more land consolidation, uh, commercial farming, and this will be driven largely by effectively the change in rural structure with people moving more predominantly into a a, a, an urban environment who are looking for greater opportunities that are outside uh, the farming sector and I think those offer, offer great opportunities for larger consolidation of land looking at more contiguous land systems where you can implement more conservative approaches and conservation measures that are also associated with promoting biodiversity. I'm optimistic because we could be looking at uh, uh, the, the problems of land and water degradation from a window of being a wicked problem. And, and invariably we see wicked problems as problems that are insurmountable. And I would not like to see land and water degradation placed into that basket. They are solved. They are solvable because we have the techno technologies and the approaches to actually do it. What we need 
is that political will, that policy uh, environment, and also, I think, a community, a global community, essentially coming behind this whole process of we need to sustain these fragile resources. I've spent a lot of time in northeast Thailand looking at small-scale integrated farming systems. And these are small-scale farming systems that are no greater than about four, four and a half hectares that grow rice, have fish ponds, have trees, have fruit, and have vegetables and a livestock component. Completely in integrated, very conservative in the amount of resources they use, but highly productive. And there are many, many examples of such farming systems throughout the globe. I think these are the opportunities we do have when we're looking at small-scale farming systems of emulating these diverse, integrated and very conservative production systems. And Thailand has excellent examples of it. My exposure with farmers in, in Northeast Thailand who have adopted this approach, a more conservative approach, is, is one of we're here for the long term. We're here essentially for the next generation. We're preserving this resource for the generations to come in the future. And I think if we keep that in mind as essentially what we want to be promoting, that stewardess, uh, that custodian of this resource to be handed on to the next generation, I think we will see definitely more conservative approaches, conservation approaches adopted.